Welcome again to the newsroom. I'm Simisola Adikun. Gunmen have abducted a former accountant general of Cross River State under Donald Duke's administration, Rose Vasi, and three others along the Uyanga Ecometer axis of the Calabar Ecom Highway on Tuesday. This attack is coming barely 24 hours after the state police command said it had deployed tactical teams, including the anti cultism and kidnapping squad, to that axis of the highway to safeguard motorists and commuters plying the highway. The police public relations officer of the command, SP Irene Ugo, who confirmed the Tuesday's incident, said the command is working to see that the four abducted persons were released unharmed. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Paul Atsinubu, has said his detractors have no proof that he gets a share of the revenue of Lagos State. The former Lagos governor stated this in an interview with the BBC News on Monday, shortly after his appearance at the Chatham House in London. The APC candidate also said those criticizing his source of wealth were driven by envy, adding that he hasn't gotten any government contract or appointment since he left office in 2007. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says the fight against corruption by the administration of President Mohamed Buhari is on track. Speaking at the 8th edition of the administration's scorecard in Abuja on Wednesday, Mohammed said the proceeds of crime recovery and management bill, which is already law, is among three proposed legislation designed by the executive to combat corruption. The minister revealed that the federal government has so far recovered over 120 billion naira with the law in place. A misplaced medical tube may have contributed to the death of the first child in the UK to die after contracting COVID. 13-year-old Ismail Mohammed Abdulwahab's death on March 30, 2020 at King's College Hospital in London prompted widespread shock, which was compounded when it emerged that his immediate family, including six siblings, could not attend his funeral because of COVID lockdown restrictions. At a review of the case heard on Tuesday, the medical cause of death was given as acute respiratory distress syndrome. The inquest will hear evidence from the consultant who conducted that investigation, as well as doctors and nurses who treated Ismail. Nigeria's crude oil production has risen to 1.5 million barrels per day as the country moves to recover its export pipelines. Speaking on Tuesday at the 11th Nigeria Practical Content, organized by the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board in Uyo Akwaibom State, the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, revealed that Nigeria has not recorded significant funding in the oil and gas sector in the last 10 years. Kiari insisted that Nigeria has the capacity to hit 2.4 million barrels per day if the challenges confronting the sector are sorted. The police in Germany have arrested 25 individuals across the country over an alleged plot to overthrow the government. The suspects were alleged to be members of the Reichsbürger, a far-right movement that does not believe in the legitimacy of the modern German state. Germany's Justice Minister Marco Buschmann posted on Twitter saying the Federal Prosecutor General is investigating a suspected terrorist network with ties to the Reichsbürger movement. Cristiano Ronaldo has denied reports linking him to a £173 million deal with Saudi Arabian side Al Nasir, insisting they were not true. Reports emerged on December 5 that suggested the out-of-contract star was on the verge of agreeing a huge deal with Al Nasir that would have seen the five-time Ballon d'Or winner net close to £173 million per season. Spanish outlet Marca had also reported that the initial deal was worth close to £86 million but would include incentives by further agreements such as advertisement and sponsorship deals. That's all on the newsroom at this time. Join us again for more stories. Thank you for watching.